Joining us here in Asbury Park, New Jersey, MSNBC contributor Mike Barnacle, Pulitzer Prize winning historian John Meacham, Harbor, New York, and the Rockaways. We have Willie Geist, Brian Shackman, and Bill Karens are in Seaside Heights. And yeah, joining yeah, us now up. here, yeah, yeah. well, I was getting, it was building up. I was building okay. up to him. I don't think he needs to build up. Okay, well, <laughs> joining us. I just don't think, I don't think he needs to build up. Okay, well, maybe you, all right. Thank you People for chiming here in. People here obviously know who he is. Thank you for chiming in. I appreciate okay. your input. <laughs> joining us now, the Republican governor of New Jersey, Chris Christie. Chris, good to see you. Good morning, Mika. Good to good morning, see you. Joe, Mike. Hey. So, uh, let, let yeah. Let, let's start with the headline. Uh, the people of New Jersey, uh, just how tough and how resilient they have been over the past six months. We've been, we've been going around talking and just have just been blown away uh, by their spirit, their toughness. Well, you know, I said that right along right from the beginning. And I've lived here all my life and I know I know the people here. I'm one of them. And the fact is, I, I knew that people were down and hurting in the days afterwards. But I knew that folks would just pick themselves up and, and get back to work. And that's what people have done. And the progress we've made in the last six months has really been extraordinary. I want to talk. Uh, let, let's just take this sequentially after the storm hit. I was talking to John Meacham earlier about the historical impact uh, that you and President Obama working together had on the election. It, it, it did have an impact. Um, six months later, uh, you were a pariah in your party in many parts. A lot of fundraisers, uh, big fundraisers are angry with you. Uh, a lot of conservatives say they're done with you. You're finished in national politics uh, because, uh, because of what you did. Six months later, do you have any regrets? No. No. All right. Uh, next okay. question. <laughs> I mean, let's, no, seriously, no, let, let's yeah. talk about this. This is how screwed up American politics is, that I see it every day, whether I'm on the Twitter feed. By the way, you got a 67 percent approval rating. Every day I see yeah. on the Twitter feed, yeah. I see conservatives hacking you to little bit, bits, calling you a traitor, calling you a Benedict Arnold, saying you're a rhino, saying you're finished. And yet all of these losers... Uh, support losing candidates. You've got a 67 percent approval rating. What do you say to your crit, your concern, your far, 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 far right wing critics that well, think it's wrong for you to work with a Democrat? I, I say the same thing to all my critics, no matter where they are in the spectrum. That is, I've got a job to do. And the fact is, there was nothing else that ever crossed my mind in the days after. I mean, you wake up on Tuesday, October 30th, seven million of your 8.8 .8 million citizens are out of power. There's not a school opened. Not a water treatment or wastewater treatment plan is operational. Um, 51 gas stations in the whole state are open. Um, you're not sitting there worrying about presidential politics, Joe. Yeah. You've got people suffering, and you just say, I've got to do my job. So I, I say the same thing to all of them. Put yourself in my shoes, and if you're a responsible elected official, you would do nothing different. And what that is is, I, listen, I supported Mitt Romney. I was very vocal about it. But the fact is that presidential politics was not the first thing on my mind that day. Yeah. It was getting my state recovered and restored. So let, let me ask you what we asked Chuck Schumer. Six months later, why is it taking so long? It took Congress three months to pass a bill. Three months later, we were showing, do we have the VO of... of you, days ago? You look at the VO of what's going on in the Rockaways, what's going on yeah. here. It looks like it looks like it was a week after. I mean, whether you're in New Jersey, no, no, this is New Jersey, Jersey, but we have the same clips coming out of the Rockaways. You know, it seems like it's it's taking a while for the federal government and, and the state, and the local Lord. to get things moving. Well, a few things. First of all, we've removed now um, millions and millions of cubic yards of debris. Um, the things that you're seeing here are now private homes that the folks who own them have to decide what they want to do with them. And, and so there's a, there's a dichotomy between what's happening in the public realm and what's happening in the private realm. But here's the thing. When I was yelling and screaming about why this bill wasn't passed earlier, Joe, this is why. Because every day you tack on to the front end is the day you tack on to the back end. And so literally we still have not seen the aid that we've fought for three months ago. I think we'll probably start to see that aid flowing this week. Now, they passed the bill back in mid-January. And so the fact is, I knew that back in, in November and December, which is why I was arguing and yelling and in early January about get the bill passed, because I knew you're talking about billions of dollars. It's going to take a while to get the mechanism up to be able to push that money out. And so when Congress delayed on the front end, um, it's caused these back end delays. And then it'll affect businesses uh, for months and years to come if they can even rebuild. Mike? 
Well, it's interesting, uh, the functions of, of a governor as opposed to national candidates who come out of the Senate or the Congress. When you're governor, six months ago, I mean, as you indicated, you're confronted with, you know, most of the gas stations are closed, roads are underwater, people are homeless. So today, fast forward six months today, what are the biggest priorities in the, in, in the context of this disaster that you face on a daily basis? It's getting people back in their homes, Mike. I mean, we still have, you know, tens of thousands of families that aren't back in their homes. And so job one is to get the grant program going, which allows them to rebuild, elevate their homes. Second is for businesses, for the businesses that still haven't reopened to get them business grants that will get them reopened. Because all the other things are back to normal. Power is back on, gas stations back open. All but four schools are back open from where we were. So that's, those things of normalcy are back, but now the economic engine of housing and business has to get back. People who were out of their homes and have been out of their homes for the past six months, do you have any tracking system? Where are they? Yeah, um, we do. Uh, some of them are staying with friends and relatives. Some of them are staying in apartments and homes that we've rented for them. Um, and really now, I think there's only about 500 uh, or less, four or 500 families that are still in hotels that uh, we put, we had thousands in there in the beginning. I think it's down to about 400. That program will end this week. So everyone else, is, we've either rented them apartments, rented them homes, or they're staying with friends and relatives. So no one is staying and is homeless in the in the sense that they have no place to go every night to stay warm and have something to eat. But they want to get back into yeah. their homes. They want life. Yeah, so they so want that's life. what the difference is. We brought John Meacham here. We're not exactly yeah. sure because he only knows two things about New Jersey. One, that Alexander Hamilton was shot here. Yeah. And two, that Princeton's crew team had a a pretty good season last well, year. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. And, and Jefferson people like to point out that at least our guy didn't get shot in Jersey. Because uh, uh, so. he never came to Jersey. Well, <laughs> that's that's a good here. point. You, one of the reasons you came under fire from Republicans, part, very partisan Republicans, was the uh, buddy embrace with Obama in the hour of crisis. How has the president and the White House been since then? Listen, the president's kept every promise that he made. And, 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 and the fact is that that's what I was saying at the time. What I was saying at the time was I was asked about how was the president doing. And I said, he's doing a good job. He's kept his word. And so everybody knows that I have about 95 percent level of disagreement with Barack Obama on issues of principle and philosophy. But the fact is we have a job to do. And what people expect from people they elect is to do their job. And, and that's why they hate Washington so much. And you know that, John. Yeah. They hate Washington because people don't care. Many of them don't care about getting the job done. They care about just arguing with Israel and being right. The president's guilty of that. The Congress is guilty of that. What we did, the president and I did at that time, was we saw suffering together. And when you see that, you're either going to step up and be responsible or you're not. And we stepped up and were responsible <laughs> together. And since that time, I have to say, everything that they promised they would do, they've done. Um, and so I don't have any complaints or arguments with him this morning on the issue of Sandy Relief. Yeah. Willie Geis is in Rockaway. Willie, do you have a question? Willie, what, Willie, what are you governor? doing out there? He's in Rockaway. Willie, you look so lonely. <laughs> what the heck are you doing out doing, there? Doing what you're doing. Well, Barnacle abandoned me. He was supposed to be here this morning. He wanted to go see Governor Christie, apparently. I don't blame him for that. <laughs> governor Christie, I, first well, of all, is like a guy the, he's from like the New Jersey. He's like repairman out there. Look Aww. at him. Look at Willie Geist out there. It's unbelievable. <laughs> all Someone it's, save it's Willie me. a couple. <laughs> a couple Green dogs Willie. and a couple clam boats. That's about all we got out here this morning. Uh, Governor, <laughs> Governor, I want to ask you what you, this, because the story where you are is, is not unlike the story here, which is that there are a resilient people, of course, but they're hurting. So I'm wondering what you say as a governor and as a man when you put your arm around somebody whose house has been washed away, who's not sure what their life looks like tomorrow or the month or the year after that. What do you say to those people? Uh, listen, first, you just embrace them and let them know. When I look at people and say, we're not going to forget you. And that, you know, nothing's going to get fixed overnight. And people know that. But I tell people we haven't forgotten them. And that's the most important thing. I think what people are most scared of is that, that they're going to be forgotten, that their yeah. problems are going to be forgotten. And we won't do that. And so that's what I say to them, Willie. There's nothing more. You know, don't make promises you can't keep. So uh, I'm just trying to say to them, we're going to work as hard as we can to get them back in their homes. And when we do, um, their lives will start to get back to a new normal. There's a little girl I met in, um, in Middletown who I've called a couple of times since then. I got her cell phone number from her that day. She's nine years old. Name is Ginger. She was the only child who came up to me during this two weeks 
who was in tears when she came to see me and told me how scared she was and that she'd never house anymore. You know, I'm not good at taking that. And I will never forget her. That was Governor Chris Christie describing one victim of Sandy who has found a special place in his heart. She's now 10-year-old Ginger Doherty, and she joins us now with her mother, Gail, also here on set in Asbury Park, the First Lady of New Jersey and chair of the New Jersey Relief Fund, Mary Pat Christie. Mary Pat, so good to have you on the show. Great Thanks to have you here. Yay. Great to be here. Uh, how, how, how's the relief fund going? A lot of, a lot of people Morning. still hurting. We, we look at... We look at the shot six months later, and boy, it's uh, it's still tough. Yeah, it's remarkable, but we're doing great things. You know, we've been out, we gave to uh, Coastal Habitat for Humanity, we gave them $800,000 last week, and um, we're seeing people get to work rebuilding. How, I, how, I did how, some sawing, <laughs> uh, you'd be impressed. Fantastic, how much money's come in so far? So we have effort? 34 million in commitments, and yep. uh, by Wednesday, we will have granted $11 million. And, and what's your, what, what are your overall goals? What, what's your short-term goal? What's your long-term goal with the New Jersey Relief Fund? $34 million pledged so far. That's amazing. Yeah, long-term, we're going to be here until people don't need us anymore. So uh, I'm going to keep making phone calls and raising money. And uh, we're actually getting ready to launch something called National Dine-Out Day yeah. uh, with some uh, corporate sponsors. Coca-Cola is helping us. And uh, that's going to happen June 19th to start off the summer season. Six months later, what's the most immediate need? That you're housing, you know, housing. People just need help rebuilding. Um, but we have other things, you know, mental health. When disasters strike, those things always uh, need need help, financial literacy, things like that. Okay, okay um, I'm going to get back to how people can uh, follow up and help. Um, but I want to talk to Ginger and Mom Gail. You guys warm enough? Thank yeah, you for back. coming on the show. Tell me about your meeting the governor the first time you saw him, because he was deeply moved by that. Um, I was at my the firehouse in Port Monmouth, mm-hmm. um, and I lived down the street, and my mom wanted to hear what he had to say. So we walked down, and then he just walked up and stuff. And what was that meeting like, Governor? It was the single most emotional meeting for me in, the, in, in all the weeks after the storm. Because um, I have a girl, same age as Ginger, Bridget, and, um, and, uh, and they look somewhat alike. Mm-hmm. And so I saw Ginger, and I saw my own child. And she was so upset and worried, like any child that age would be. And, you know, providing reassurance to adults was easy for me. But... Yeah. Seeing a child upset was tough. So, Ginger, you were crying? Yeah. And, and not just because Chris Christie was there. No. <laughs> you were crying about other things. Can you tell me what, what it was that you were crying about? Because um, my house was really, like, messed up and stuff mm-hmm. from the storm. Were you with her? I was, yeah. We just took a walk down there to see the, all the cars were coming. Everyone said he was coming to see the ones that he, what the governor had to say. So you ended up, uh, through this relationship, um, writing uh, the Time 100 essay on Chris Christie. You did, Ginger. <laughs> I'm going to read your words, okay? Uh, my house was all messed up, and people told us we couldn't stay there anymore. The governor told me not to worry, and he looked very serious and sad, and he cried. He called me a few days after the storm and asked if we had found a place to live yet and if we were doing okay. When I went to the state house in January to hear his speech, I met two of his kids, and I even got to meet the heroes from New Jersey who saved people. The governor's friends high-fived me and said, nobody makes the governor cry, <laughs> except Ginger. I, I've got to say, Governor, you know, uh, you, you obviously are a huge Bruce Springsteen fan, but I don't think there's anybody you would rather have write a piece in the Time 100 about you than Ginger. No, it was a complete work, shock Ginger. to me. You know, it's, I didn't know Ginger was doing it, and uh, they released the, the, the Time 100 essays, and I saw it was Ginger who wrote it. And uh, it, much better two years ago when I was on the list, Mitch Daniels wrote it. Much rather have Ginger. Oh, yeah. Um, than than, than mm-hmm. Mitch Daniels. And, you know, she she came to, to symbolize for a lot of people in the state what we really care about the most, which is getting the state restored back so our kids will feel safe at 
secure and like their future is ahead of them and not have to worry about adult problems. We should be fixing these problems. So she shouldn't have to worry. A snapshot of, of what a lot of folks are going through. What is your living uh, situation now? Is it all fixed and it's just you've moved, you moved on? Turn the page, right? No, no unfortunately, <laughs> we're living in a rental temporarily. Oh. Trying Our house has to be lifted, so we're going through the process of having the house lifted and getting permits approved and hopefully rebuilding as soon as possible and moving forward. So. More than a full-time job, though. When do you ever think you'll be back in a home? They, you know, last last time the contractors mentioned something was probably October or November. So it's just to lift the house is a process. So it's going to take some time. So. And some patience. So we're just trying to we're execute sure. that. <laughs> And so, what do you what do you what do you do, Governor? What, what, for, the permitting does take a long time. Uh, getting gov- the government, uh, the federal government, come and takes a long time. Uh, is there anything you can do to, to keep pushing and fighting to expedite this process? That's what you do. Yeah. And you keep pushing and fighting and talking to people and getting them help. And and when you find these these speed bumps in the way, you you knock them out of the way. And and that's that's my job at this point. My job is to find the speed bumps and get them out of the way for people. And and being getting communication from from folks like Gail who are in the community um, and know what's going on are really really important. And, you, and you're, you're you're meeting with the HUD Secretary, Housing and Urban Development Secretary today, aren't you? Later today, Secretary Donovan will be here, um, and I, I'm sure that's going to be very good news for the people who are looking for more aid to help from the federal government. So, Mary Pat, uh, in terms of the New Jersey Relief Fund and all the work that, I think some of this is happening out of your kitchen, is what the governor was telling me, all the work that you're oh, doing. Oh, it did. That's how it started. In a right kitchen in your kitchen. With the generator three days Very after nice. the storm. Um, well, how can people help? Um, is, should they go online? Well, should they call the governor's office? I mean, no, no, they should definitely go online to our website, okay. which is hurricanesandynjreliefffund.org. Um, and they can also go on to our new website, which is... Um, uh, nationaldineoutday.com. Okay, great. And so. we've got, uh, oh, perfect. We've got a, a full screen up we'll there. We've got that up and a, and a couple others. We've already put up the dine out. We'll do that again. Uh, so, Governor, any announcements today? We'll have you, you and, and uh, it's Secretary Dunham. Yeah, we'll have some announcements later today that will be good news about, uh, you know, billions of dollars of aid um, getting ready to come. I, I think, you know, later this week we'll be we'll be ready to start rolling out aid to businesses yeah. um, and get homeowners to start to apply for grants uh, to be able to help to rebuild their homes, elevate their homes um, like Gail and Ginger and their family are going through. And and uh, that'll start to be working now. And, and I'm, I'm relieved that we're getting to this stage of it. But we have a ton more work to do, Joe. You've seen as you're traveling around. Yeah. We have a lot more work to do to get people in their homes. That's the most important thing to me now is getting businesses back up and running up and down this boardwalk in Asbury Park. Yeah. And so Memorial Day weekend, um, the great news is that almost all the boardwalks will be rebuilt by Memorial Day weekend. We'll have people out at the beaches and getting ready to start the summer. And the temperature will be above freezing. And Ginger, <laughs> congratulations uh, for everything and congratulations sure. on getting out of school on the coldest day in <laughs> April history. That too. Yeah. No, the essay is wonderful. It I, is. That was a it great Great, great thing you did. And Gail, really nice to meet you. Good luck. Thanks for having us. Good luck Appreciate with your it. home yeah, and your family. <laughs> All right. Uh, Governor Chris Christie and Mary Pat, the Thank awesome you guys. Mary Pat. Thank you so much. For more information on the New Jersey Relief Fund, visit sandynjreliefffund.org. You can also donate $10 by just texting Sandy to 20222. 20222. Message and data rates may apply, but 10 bucks to Sandy gets there in a matter of seconds, so go for it. Do it. And June 19th is National Dine Out Day, benefiting the Hurricane Sandy, New Jersey Relief Fund. And Governor, come back. We'd love to have you in studio and talk about uh, the governor's campaign. Obviously, today's not the day to talk about that, but a lot of questions to ask about uh, what that campaign's going to look like over Come the back next and see six you guys soon. Absolutely. All right. Thanks Sounds for coming great. to Jersey, guys. We love it. We Appreciate always love it. being Thank here. And we, Thanks, the, the best part about yeah. Jersey are the people, again. They're awesome. Uh, <laughs> resilient. Hello. Yep. Yep. Right.